Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Karen's Kitchen. I'm coming to you today with another recipe in the in the Pampered Chef Quick uh, Quick Cooking Deluxe Blender. Um, there's my daughter. She's the first one in. <laughs> oh, you, you're the first one in, sweetie. Um, I'm going to get a few people in here before I before I. Uh, there's Erlene. Hi, Erlene. Um, Erlene has already done this, but she didn't periscope it, but she did put it up on my, my page, so I won't be doing that. But uh, I'm going to, uh, and there's Sharon. Um, this should be a simple recipe to do. I've got everything laid out here. Um, I want to, and we are <laughs> on the cool side today. We were 35 when I got up this morning. That's cold. So when I walked my dogs, it was 35 degrees, and my daughter says, well, that's a little too cold to walk the dogs, but I was dressed warm. Hi, Carrie, good to see you. I had a hot, warm coat on with a hood, hood clear up to my head. And... Oh, I bet you would. Yep, I know I would. <laughs> I love tomato soup. This is my favorite soup. It's my favorite soup of all. Um, no, no snow. Not this early, Arlene. We don't need any snow this early. Um, uh, no, but it was awful cold. Um, we're supposed to get some, a few nights of real cold weather. Um, we had a unseasonally cool weather, you know, forecast so but my furnace is on running you know had to do it got too cold to go without it so and we're not even getting out of the 50s today oh no got snow i heard that they got snow to, they got snow well i think we're the reason we're so unseasonably cool is the rockies got a lot of snow and they've been cold so it kind of came our way and my daughter she's in the 80s and 90s yet she's in missouri so it hasn't hit her yet but she's eventually going to get it too Two feet in Montana. You know, that's a very early snowfall in Montana. I don't ever remember it ever getting snow that quick. Uh, oh, you're cool and raining. We were raining over the weekend, but not today. It's nice and sunny today. Because <laughs> during the week, I have to, you know, I want to walk the dogs a couple times a day, and I have to kind of walk in between the raindrops, you know. Ra walk when I know it's not going to rain. If it starts to drizzle, I just get a fast walk. Try to get a fast walk out of it, but Carmen... She wants to smell everything, so it takes me a little longer to do my walk than anticipated, but I get through it. You know, I don't get wet or anything, and I'm glad of that, but uh, I wanted to do a soup today because the soup would taste so good in this cold weather. Um, 58 degrees out. I don't know what we are here. We're supposed to be 65 today, but it's not going to be warm at all. Um, I think that's the warmest we're going to get, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, like, I'm hating it, but then I'm glad I'm loving it, too. Um, oh, you're in Chicago, and it's raining there, and it's cooler. Well, you know, this is this is fall, after all. So you're bound to get the, uh, the real cold temperatures. You know, there's not much we can do about it. Fall is here, and we have to deal with it, you know. Um, but it's better than being 100 degrees. I, I mean, I had to deal with 100-degree weather for the longest time, and I didn't like it, you know. Uh, is it cool in Toronto, Canada? My son just came back from, or is coming back from Victoria, B.C. They're driving home now. Um, they're in Washington State right now. Um, and I don't know how the weather was when they were in Canada. Um, I'll find out probably later on when he gets home. Yeah, he went to Victoria, B.C. for a week. They, uh, because her, their anniversary was on Tuesday, and my daughter-in-law's birthday was yesterday. So they wanted to celebrate their anniversary in uh, another place and then her birthday. So that's what they did, which was kind of nice for them to get away, all four of them to kind of get away, you know, and I'm happy that they could do that. They want to go to Hawaii next year. I'm going to, I'm going to put a bug in their ear and says, take me with you. Although I used to live in Hawaii, but I'd love to go back to Hawaii and visit, you know, the, uh, my son's the only one that's been there. The other three have not been there. They, they have never seen Pearl Harbor or any of it. So that's probably what they're going to do is see Pearl Harbor, Polynesian Cultural Center. Hi, Missy. Good to see you. Um. There's there are a lot of sites to see in Hawaii if you've never been there. Um, good to see you. I'm trying to get enough people in here before I start my soup recipe. It's going to take a little time to do it. I've got some add-ins. I, I got some um, basil leaves, some fresh basil leaves, and I just measured out a quarter cup and put it in here. Um, and I've got a couple Roma tomatoes and some uh, whole tomatoes in the can. So that's... all. Um, I've oh, never been. Take you to. I tell you, it's a beautiful place. My daughter knows what it's like. Hawaii's beautiful. You know, it's nice all year round. You don't have to wear long pants. You know, it's just, oh, it's awesome. So, I love it. 
but I think I'm going to get this started now while I'm while I'm thinking about it before I get too far, you know, I yak and yak and yak and don't get this started. So I'm going to tell you what I'm putting in here as I'm putting it in here. Okay, I want to make sure you get the right recipe. I'm going to put in one quarter, it says one quarter cup of water or low sodium vegetable broth. I don't think it's low sodium, but I'm going to put it in here anyway. I've got the veggie broth, so I'm going to put that in here. And you wouldn't use very much because you got your tomatoes and everything got got liquid in them, so you wouldn't, uh, you don't have to worry about putting too much liquid in here. Um, one teaspoon of, uh, one teaspoon of salt, and I measured that out, so I put that in here. Rinse these off, I don't have to use too much later, just kind of rinse them off a little bit. And, okay, and let's see, um, oh, and I forgot the garlic cloves, I'll get those, just a minute, I gotta go get those. I knew, I knew there was something I was gonna forget. <laughs> then you can watch me get the, get the peeling off. Um, I knew there was, I meant to do garlic cloves, and I don't know why I forgot it. I'll get them right here. Okay. And I can show you how, how you get those peelings off. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of awesome to watch it, but I'm going to do that right now. I got, I need the garlic cloves, so I'm going to show you, I'll show you how I do this. I'll put this down a little bit so you can see how I do the garlic cloves. Um, this is a simple, I've seen Alexis do it, and it's very simple to do it. You just lay your, your knife on your top of your garlic press or your garlic and go like this. Just hit it. Basically what it does is it pulls the peeling right off. See the peeling coming right off? Well, it kind of flattens your, your garlic a little bit too, but it takes your peeling and it comes right off. Because I'm not going to uh, mince these. It flattens them, but that's okay because they're going to get pulverized in there anyway. And that's basically, that's all you do to get the peeling off. comes off simple as that. So I'm going to put those... And throw the paper away, the peeling. Be right there. Wash my rinse. Stop sticky for some reason. Get some of your hands is sticky. Okay, just rinse that off a little bit. Okay. All right. Now it calls for two Roma tomatoes, and I'm going to take those Roma tomatoes and I'm going to cut these up a little bit. Um, don't have to cut them up very much, but I'm going to cut them up some. These are real good Roma tomatoes. I just bought these the other day. I'm going to cut them up just a little bit. Put them in here. I think it's it's better if you if you cut them up and kind of and and uh, helps helps the machine a little bit, you know, because it's going to pulverize them anyway. And then one can of your um, whole tomatoes, and I've got that already opened up. I'm not going to cut those up. Those will, those will come down, cut go by themselves. Got half an onion. There's the hair side. Half an onion. And then the garlic cloves. And then the add-ins will be the basil. That'll get added in after the, after the recipe gets done. So I don't have to do that right away. I'm always, always on this. Never can figure this out, but I'll get it. What do you know? I got it. Okay, now I'm going to set this on the soup setting. Okay, and then we hit start. That's all there is to it. Anyway, what's everybody? What's everybody's weather doing today? I know I talked to a few of you. Said what your weather was doing. What's um, what kind of weather are you going to have? Going to be real cold. Oh, did you make sure the cap's on good? Oh, it is early, and I can't hardly pull it off. It's, it's on. Um, yeah, it's on. There's no problem. It snapped in place when I put it in there. So, I, Alexis, just got the tomato soup. Just got it in here. Um, I'm making that tomato basil. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome to everybody coming in. It's just getting started, Alexis. So, you didn't miss much. I just put everything in here, and it's just getting started. We were 35 degrees this morning, so this soup's going to taste really good. And you know what my sweet potato soup that I got, I made the other day, that got two bowls and I finished it, you know, and it's a lot better than the quick cooker because I eat it one, ate the one bowl one day and then yesterday I finished it up. So it was good. Uh, oh, you're off to see some church friends? Awesome. Awesome. So this is, this will get up to 212 degrees and like it did before. And uh, it'll take, a, take as long as, it, as, as the other one did. Now, like I said, the basil will go in the very last after it's done and this is the fresh basil. It's got a good smell to it too. Um, they say to use fresh basil, so I measured out a quarter cup. 
Um, it's going to be awesome. Oh, shoot, I forgot to put my other tomato in there. I'm going to have to, how can I, I got to put this on pause, don't I? Oh, boy, I forgot my other, oh, I'm going to cancel that. Do I just put it, how do I put it on pause? <laughs> can I stop it and put it on pause? How do I put it on pause? Oh, drop, oh, yeah, drop it in the top. There you go. You're right. I can drop it in the top. <laughs> You're right. I can do that. I don't have to take it off. I forgot about my other tomato. For, uh, for, thank, uh, oh, thank you, Alexis, for telling me. I forgot about that. I, I should have known better. I can take the top off. I just got to make sure I get this in here real quick before it starts bubbling up. It's not going to yet, but I just happened to see that I didn't get my tomatoes in there. Okay. Okay, now let's get this on here tight. Got to make sure I get this on here good. Okay, there, it's latched, so it's not going to come off. So there we go. Oh, I should have known that. But there we go. Now I've got both tomatoes in there. This happened to notice I didn't use both tomatoes. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> I guess I was in a rush and I, I saw the other tomato letting, like, eh. Oh, just push that push around button in that pauses. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, I could have done that too. But you know, this it worked okay. It's just getting the little feeling for this and and learning how it runs. This is only my second time of using it, so yeah, I'm gonna get it. But putting it through the top was a smart way to do. It, it worked okay. I got the cap untied. It can't come off. It's it's on there real tight. Because once it starts blending, you don't want the cap pulling off, popping off, and you decorate your kitchen. <laughs> Oh, tomato paste? Yeah, I suppose they have. Okay, thank you, Alexis, for coming in for those few minutes. Uh, yes, it's a cooking blender. This is from Pampered Chef. It's, a <coughs> it's the Pampered Chef Deluxe Cooking Blender. It has a heating element in it, which as it, as it cooks it and, and it blends. It blends and cooks at the same time. Um, yeah, <laughs> red walls. I don't want red walls. <laughs> But anyway, <coughs> this is a very good, very good machine. And this eventually, this is a glass container, and this eventually will get very, very hot. And if I touch it, I'll get scalded. So I can't. It's right now. It's as cool to the touch because it's only 108 degrees. So it has to go up to 212. Um, once it gets up to 212, then in here it'll stay. It'll stop going around, and the time will count down. And then, then I can let you see what it, what it is when it starts counting down. You should be able to see it. It's up to 111 right now. 112. But it's an awesome blender. This is my second time using it. This is a, I made some sweet potato. I made some, yeah, Arlena's made this. And I, and I think tomato soup is my favorite soup. I really love tomato soup. Um, but I, and then since I've got this blender, <coughs> I wanted to make it in here. Because this makes fast work of it. Um, so does the quick cooker. But as far as this is concerned, it makes a lot less than the quick cooker does. Quick cooker makes way too much. So this only gets about two bowls out of it. And I can say have one one day and one the next day. So it's awesome. So I don't have that much. So it's good. So if you haven't got this blender, get with Alexis. She just, she just left because she's meeting some church friends, but you know everybody knows who she is. Get with Alexis and Tell her you want to you host a show or you want to be a consultant. I got this for 60% off by hosting a show earlier this month. Um, it only cost me $139.60 from $349, which is an awesome deal. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really loving this machine. I, you know, when I, as I said the other day, when I first saw the machine Alexis demonstrated, I loved the way it works, but I didn't like the looks of it. And I thought, well, I don't know if I'm going to, it is. And I thought, am I really going to like it? But you know, the more I watched her use it, I got, it grew on me. And now that I have it myself, I like the looks of it. It's actually very pretty. And it doesn't take up much room either. It doesn't take up as much room as the Vitamix seems to. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. I set it right next to my quick cooker so I, I don't get everything mixed up. Because um, <laughs> Arlene, she had her, her, her Vitamix and her, her, her quick cooker, or, or this sitting next to each other, and she got the tampers mixed up. Well, I won't do that because the tamper for the Vitamix is off, on the other counter. And then this has a tamper, too. Um, the tamper for this is right here. This is the tamper for this. And this is what you use when you make ice cream or stuff that you can't get to go down into your container. 
Um, it's awesome. This is a real nice blender. I know Erlene has used hers a lot. Um, she's used it about every day. Like I said, this is my second time using it. I want to use it. We were, like I said, we were 35 degrees this morning when I got up. I thought, wow, that's cold. So I'm glad I put my furnace on because I needed to put it on. So I'm, I, uh, as everybody else, real, real cold. I know some people said that they're, they're getting colder, but you know, this is fall after all. <laughs> and we're going to get colder, you know. And you know what? I, now I'm talking about being colder. Um, yeah, 35 this morning. Well, we're getting the cold weather because of the Rockies getting all that snow. They got cold and got snow, and it's affecting us. Um, someone gave you a Vitamix. You can use it for smoothies. You can use it for ice cream. You can use it for soup, however. You, you have to cook your stuff on the stove first. Um, you can find recipes for Vitamix on the Vitamix website or on, on YouTube. Um, oh, yeah. High 80s or low 90s. Yeah, look at my daughter. She's high 80s or low 90s. Well, I don't want those temperatures back again. We had an awful hot summer. Um, but I I got my air conditioner. I'm, I got my air conditioner unhooked this morning. I haven't put it away because I need to I needed to wash the the uh, um, filters and they were filthy dirty. So I, I washed them and I'm letting, letting them dry completely before I put put them back on the air conditioner and put it away. So it's still sitting in the living room. Unhooked, but sitting on the living room floor waiting for this these to go back on and then I'll put it away and cover it up. Um, so this is an awesome blender. If you don't have one, try to get one of these. This this is, re I really like the way it works. I think, I think what really impresses me about it is the fact that it blends as it cooks and it makes everything, pulverizes everything. And I love that, that it pulverizes everything. I've got whole tomatoes in here. Didn't even cut them up or anything. Um, I did the Roma tomatoes because they're a little bit bigger. Um, and I found out something, too, the other day. If you want to like, store tomatoes, in, like, people don't put tomatoes in the refrigerator. You want to store tomatoes on your countertop. What you need to do is wear the... Uh, Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. That is my, my tomato soup is still uh, it's 145 degrees. It hasn't even started cooking yet. It's still, it's still kind of more or less just heating it up, blending a little bit. But anyway, if you want to store... Tomatoes on your on your uh, countertop, you must store them upside down, which means the stem part where the leaves were on attached to the plant, you store them with that on the countertop, and you're, they said that it won't spoil because that's what makes it spoil is it spoils at the very top first as it gets air to it. So I took those Roman tomatoes and kept them on the counter upside down, no problem. They kept perfect, and I did not know that. You know, I, these are uh, tips and tricks I found on Pinterest. I sent it to my daughter. Um, it's an aw it's awesome tips and tricks, um, and you also if you want to keep your um, zucchini and your cucumbers longer, wrap them in aluminum foil, which I did. I got some aluminum foil and wrapped them up in there. Your lettuce the same way. Um, yeah, it's, it you really learn a lot. Um, yeah, you do that because they'll keep. They will keep any tomatoes. Oh, you didn't get the no. <laughs> a lot of people, Cheryl, have been. <laughs> I okay. I, last week I notified Periscope. They got back with me right away the fir first time I notified. I contacted them the second day. I didn't, they didn't get back with me until this morning. Well, I've already, <laughs> it's already been resolved because I wasn't getting the notifications either with, with uh, iOS 13.1 uh, and then now it's 1.1, but they fix it because now I get the notifications. So um, maybe you need to, you need to update your Periscope because Periscope, um, <laughs> Periscope has since updated since the iOS 13 came out to compensate for the, because we're getting notifications for iOS 13. Uh, 40, 40 in Portland? Oh, you're in Portland. Um, I'm in Eugene, and I ended up getting 35 this morning. So it was pretty cold. It was really cold this morning. I've got the heat on, you know. Um, I wasn't about to to uh, walk this morning without a, without a coat on. Um uh, Oh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, Burr is right, but you know it is fall after all, and you you know you have to deal with it. Um, oh, I know. I just hope we don't get any snow. I know you in Portland sometimes get snow, like up on Troutdale, um, places like that. You get you get a lot of snow. I mean, they get a lot of freezing rain up there, and cars will start sliding off the bridge. Because uh, <laughs> I've seen I've seen them on, on the weather report do that. 
Oh, you're here in Hillsboro? Well, it's not much better in Hillsboro than it would be in, in Troutdale or any of those other places. 77 in Connecticut. Oh, you're doing pretty good. You you got fairly nice weather there, Cheryl. That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> I wish I had uh, better weather here, but you know, I'll take it. We were so hot this summer. I'll take this cooler weather. It's a lot better for me. I feel better. And, you know, it's like I said, it's fall after all. And we're getting we're getting cooler because of the Rocky Mountains getting that snow, which is off of early beginning snow. I don't ever remember them getting the snow in September, but I, I get it's possible. So, but uh, we're kind of unseasonally cool for this is really early for us because we don't really get real cool until uh, towards middle October or end of October, November. So this is quite cool for us, but I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. It is too early, but there, there isn't a whole lot we can do about it. I just, I just dread waiting for winter to come and wondering what, what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And it rains like crazy here by then. In October, we get tons and tons of rain. We get lots of rain. Rain every day. Oh, hi, from Rome, Italy. I get them from all over. Welcome, welcome. So we get... We get a lot of rain. We have it's nice today, but it rained yesterday, it rained Friday, it rained Thursday. It seems like it rained several days in a row. Yes, it is. It is beautiful here. Um, I like driving down down I five though and seeing uh, Mount Hood in the distance. Now I've never been up to the uh, um, anywhere near close to Mount Hood. I've never been on Mount Hood because I don't ski. I've never been to Mount St Helens. Um, now I guess they'll get they got a look out there for Mount St Helens. Um, be be awesome to see what that crater looks like. I suppose it's it's magnificent. I've never been there either. Of course, not my mom's house is in Washington State, but I've never been there either. Um, but I think I think it's still active, and I'm not sure about Mount Hood. It's never never blown yet, but you never know. <laughs> I'm waiting for it just to kind of, kind of blow, and it's really going to affect us here quite a bit, you know, because we're not that far from Mount Hood. Um, have you ever been on Mount Hood? The one that lives in Hillsboro because it looks beautiful. I mean, that's a beautiful mountain. When it gets snow on it, it's gorgeous. You know, they get a. Oh, you have you're just a street away. Oh, I bet that's gorgeous to look out your window and see Mount Hood, especially like I said with all the snow on it. Oh man, you know, and I hope that the skiers um, get enough snow to ski this year. Sometimes they don't get very a lot of snow, you know, for them to to ski. So I hope they get enough snow. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's starting early in some places, like the Rocky Mountains are already getting the snow. So who knows? You know, it's going to be snowing everywhere pretty soon. You know, <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. But we were, we were, like I said, 35 this morning. And I don't know what we are now. We're supposed to get to 65 today. I have no idea what we are now. But at least it's not real bad right now. A lot better than it was. I walked my dog this morning with a hooded coat on and, and I didn't wear gloves, but I was really dressed warm. Um, oh, you told to, oh the Timberline Lodge. I've never been there. I think it's beautiful there, isn't it? The Timberline Lodge. Um, do people just go there just to uh, do they do they actually go there not to ski, or do they actually when they go into Timberline Lodge do they actually go to ski? Because a lot of people. Um, oh, you loved it. See, I don't ski. Um, Oh, 82. That's awesome, Alexis, because you're, <laughs> you're in the southeast coast of Georgia and you're going to be warm. Oh, you, oh, I don't, no, I don't ski either. I couldn't get on a pair of skis. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, um, it's crazy. You know, the weather, the weather is so changeable. You never know from one day to the next what it's going to do. Uh, I bet it is. I bet it is really nice. Um. Oh, is that a good restaurant there? Awesome, awesome. I know a lot of people will be going to Mount Hood eventually. When the snow starts fall, falling, they'll be going there to ski. There's a lot of skiers that love Mount Hood. And it's it's the highest, I think it's, some, isn't it the highest mountain in Oregon? I believe it is. I'm not too sure, but I think it is. It's pretty high up there. I don't know what the, what the what, how many feet it is. I thought they, I heard something like 13, 14,000 feet. I'm not sure. Now you can quote me if I'm wrong. I said, I'm not really too sure, but I know it's pretty high. It's a beautiful mountain. So if you've never been um, driven down I-5 in this part of the country, as you're driving, driving down I-5 toward Portland, you can look out in the distance and you can see Mount Hood. It's as big as you please. It is absolutely gorgeous, especially with all the snow on it. I'm loving it. Um, 
Okay. First of all, you have you put in one quarter cup of water or one quarter cup of low sodium vegetable vegetable broth, and I don't think I had low sodium. Um, and uh, let's see. And then you have one pat or one teaspoon of salt. Oh, oh, thank you for the super hearts. One teaspoon of salt. Then you have uh, two Roma tomatoes, and I almost forgot, oh, forgot one. I put it through the top. Thank goodness for Alexis telling me that, or I forgot that. Um, and then one can of whole tomatoes, plum tomatoes, um, one half medium onion, two garlic cloves, and then my add-ins will be this, the basil, the very last. When it's done, then I'll post this in. And this is fresh basil, and it's got a real good smell to it. Um, no, they were already peeled. They were whole peeled tomatoes. I didn't have to peel them because I got the whole peeled tomatoes. Um, it's, be it's better to do it that way. You know, if I, was, I figure it's much easier. Yeah, this is what I bought. They were plum tomatoes. They were, so, as you can see, this is starting to get hot. It's 203 degrees, 204, 205. I can't touch it right now. Um, so this is going to get up to... Now you can see, if you can see it in your end, it's starting to bubble. Um, oh, I do too. Oh, awesome, awesome. Like you, if you can see it on your end now, it's starting to bubble. You can see it bubbling up. Now it's starting to really cook. It's starting to cook. Now it hasn't started to count the time down yet. It won't until it gets to 200, until this gets to 212. Um, as soon as it gets to 212, now it's 27, 207. When it gets to 212, then it'll start counting the time down. Um, but this is, this is an awesome recipe. You know, it's, I love these recipes that are simple. Not much to them because... When you got to spend a lot of time prepping and stuff, and when Alexis knows about that, prep can be can be take a long time to do. But you know something, coming in here and doing what we do is not easy, especially when we have to stand before you and do all the work, you know, and do the prep work. A lot, most of the time, I do it before I come in here. But getting everything ready to go, it's not easy because you can forget stuff, you know. And you try to say, well, did I get everything out? I try to remember to get everything out before. I had it out all right. I just sat it on the counter and forgot to put it in here. But now, no harm fault, no no harm done because I couldn't do it now because it would be too hot. Um, oh, you're too shy to go. You know, I'm a very shy person. You wouldn't know it looking at me and me coming in here. But before I started periscoping, I was very shy. And when I first downloaded Periscope and installed it, I thought, can I really do this? Can I go on Periscope? Can I really um, go go live before people? Let me tell you, when I first started going live, I went on for about four or five minutes. And I do, didn't do cooking scopes then. I just did a little chatting or something for four or five minutes. And to try to build my confidence up. And I did that, oh, for quite a while. And, it, and the more I did it, the easier it became. You'll find that it's a little hard at first, but you build your confidence up each and every day. And as you, as you, Keep building it up. It gets easier and easier to, to come in here. And you don't, you know, you see the con the uh, the icons at the bottom, you know, people's icons. You know they're there looking at you and they're watching you and everything. But to figure out what you want to say, what you want to talk about, what you want to do, that's the hardest part. You know, I just wing it and whatever comes out, comes out. <laughs> but uh, if you haven't got this blender, now that Alexis is back in here, if you haven't got this blender, get with Alexis, host a show or be a consultant. In fact, if you host a show this month, October and November, you can get it for 60% off. I mean, $349 is the, is the base price. And you can get it for $139.60 hosting a show. That's what I did. I told Alexis I wanted to host this month because I knew this was a special because it just came out September 1st. Um, yeah, yeah, a fundraiser. They can do a fundraiser as well. Absolutely, you can do a fundraiser. Because this is an awesome machine. And as I was telling you, when I first... See, it's starting to count the time down now. When I first got the machine, or saw Alexis unveil it, I didn't like the looks of it at all. I thought, well, that's kind of ugly. But the more she started using it, and really what impressed me was the way it worked. Not so much the looks of it, it's what it did. So when, then when I got mine and I, and I opened it up, I said, absolutely, this is, this is a better looking machine than I thought it was going to be, you know? Um, it, do, it grew on me, it really did, because this is based, similar to the quick cooker as far as your pro programs are concerned here at the cross the top because quick cooker we know has got about 16 different programs so this is based on that and you got a pause button and a cancel button same thing you have on a on the quick cooker see it's starting to bubble up um it's heating it right now it's got 13 minutes and 38 seconds to go um it heats it and then it goes from heat to blend 
And uh, this this is an awesome machine. So if you really want, like she said, have a fundraiser, um, ask to host a show because Alexis always needs all, always needs hosts to host host the shows, or or ask to be a consultant. You know, whichever. And you can get this at an awesome price of one hundred thirty nine dollars and sixty cents. Look what you get for one hundred thirty nine sixty. This has got a lot of recipes in it. The next one I might want to do is the cheesy potato soup. Um, that I haven't done that one yet. Um, the mushroom bisque, I won't do that one. The cauliflower soup, I'm not so sure. I don't know how cauliflower is going to taste in soup. And then you got beet soup. My daughter wants to try that one. But I did do the sweet potato soup, which was delicious. And I don't care for sweet potatoes. People know I don't like them. But I put them in soup and they were awesome. It tasted really good. Um, let's see. You've got, you got, you can make a whole wheat pancakes in here. Now this... Or Alexa said doesn't look very appealing. Well, I agree with her. This doesn't really look appealing. I don't know what Chana is anyway. This doesn't look appealing to me either. So I'm not going to really, I wouldn't really do that. But you can make altern alternative milks in here. Almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk. Um, combo milks probably, um, let's see. Looks like almonds and maybe cashews together. Macadamia nut milk, oat milk, and rice milk. Um, there's all these settings on, you got an alternative milk setting right there. And you can make the alternative milk. Um, I don't know if you have yet, Alexis. Uh, um, I'm going to one of these days. Here's the here's the breakfast smoothies. These are the smoothie bowls. You got a green mango coconut smoothie and the blackberry cashew smoothie. Those also look very pretty. Even this one looks pretty. I don't know about the <laughs> about the green part of it. I don't know what that is. Maybe spinach. I don't know. Um, black seed. Yep, baby spinach is what I thought. Mango in it. Uh, frozen pineapple. Coconut. Black seed. This looks very, very good. But this has got quite a few recipes throughout this book. Um, this book is very... This is another one I want to try. I'm not sure how I'm going to like it, though, because I've never had butternut squash. But I don't know if I'd make the, the put the granola in it or not. But I want to try this one, too, sometime. Um, the sweet potato was not bad, so that one might not be too bad, either. Um, there's a heated puree setting where you can uh, heat, heat things up, pureed. There's a sauce setting, too, where you can make a chicken or beef gravy, sausage gravy, um, Alfredo sauce, which would be awesome in this. Um, oh, is it yummy and soup? Awesome. Um, oh, you think, oh, yeah, I do, too, Erlene. Now, that's why on my sweet potato um, recipe, I use a fresh sweet potato. Now, Erlene made the sweet potato soup, and it looked real good. She, po she posted it and showed it to me this morning. She used a frozen sweet potatoes. You could probably do either or. They don't, they don't really say. Let um, me just tell you how much. Uh, is it yummy? I've never had butternut squash. Um, I know there's different kinds of squash out there. I have to try it, though, but there's plenty of recipes in here to try. I think Erlene's tried almost everything that's in here. Um, you're going to use fresh? Yeah. Well, the broccoli soup is the one I want to make next, and I've got two heads of broccoli for that, so I'll be waiting to make that. Um, yeah, I think fresh is a little bit better, too, Erlene. It takes a little time to cut your sweet potato up, but you can get it like I did. I, I, I got it, and it worked fine. And it actually tasted pretty good. I didn't think it was going to taste as good as it did, but it tasted really good. This got almost, uh, okay, 10 minutes left to go. Okay, now less than 10 minutes. So this, and this thing, I can't touch it because it's, it's uh, huh, overly hot. It'll get scalded on it. But you can see it's, it's actually really pretty. And once this gets done, then I'll have to, um, uh, <laughs> I know we can't stop you. You are on fire for these recipes, Erlene. You really are. Erlene has made almost everything in this book already. She's really, well, she's had it. A lot longer than I have, so she's really gone to town on her recipes. Uh, so it does it's, it does sound good. I have to try it. I'm really not sure about it because I've never really had squash. Uh, I know this is similar to pumpkin. It's from the pumpkin family. So I suppose if a person wanted to, you could probably make a make pumpkin instead of a pumpkin soup instead of squash i suppose you want if you want to um substitute i never thought about it but it probably could happen you know but um you can see the recipes on here look really good look very very good and i think this is the sweet this is the uh, sweet potato one um you got hummus you can make hummus in there too um i plan on making a lot more in here i wish they had a lot more recipes for it than they do but at least we got something to start with um, 
because being this time this time of year, I'm going to have soups a lot this winter. I'll be using this quite a bit. Um, I may not necessarily come in here and use it every day on the soups. I, um, of course, the soups I've already made, I won't make them again in here on the Periscope. I'll make them off camera. But something I haven't made, I will I will come in here and show you how to make it. Um, it's awesome. You know, my daughter's got one and she loves hers too. Now, she did scorch the bottom of her um, canister and she's not quite sure how to get it out. She tried baking soda. Um, is anybody... Um, that has it like Erlina do you know how to get that scorchness out of there she tried to get it out with baking soda and she said it didn't work I told her to put ketchup in there maybe that'll help and leave it to sit there for a while um, I she she used it for an asparagus soup but it was not a um, pampered chef recipe um, yeah that's what I told her there is a Facebook page oh you use both okay did it come out Erlene because uh, Laura said hers never came out She's in here right now. Oh, it did come out. Oh, yours came out, but I'm up my daughter's if it came out or not. Because I told her to put ketchup in it and try. I'll put it in the put the canister in the sun. Will that take the scorch out? I know that uh, Erlene said her cap of this got stained a little, and early and I know Alexa said to put it in the sun, which I intend to do with this afterwards. Um, put it out in the sun. I'll put it up where the dogs can't get to it because I don't want them dragging it all over the yard. But. Uh, Put it up in the sun, and that's supposed to that's supposed to bleach it out. So you you can't avoid stains sometimes. But she doesn't know how she got it scorched. I don't know. I just not in the book anyway. <laughs> I use ketchup. Not not sure it came out. So not sure it's it's scor It's okay. Okay. You didn't. You don't know if it came out because I if you leave it for a while. I know you can use the same thing in a quick cooker too. Oh. Huh. Oh my goodness, 40 days, whoa, Woo. man. Well, I know it's easy to scorch it with, if you use certain recipes on it. Um, my daughter wasn't sure because she probably had too much asparagus and not enough liquid, and that's probably why it's scorched. You gotta make sure you have enough liquid in it. Um, it wasn't a PC recipe, it was for the Ace Blender that she had, and she decided to try that, and then, you have to kind of adjust it a little bit. Um, oh. Uh, but you have to kind of adjust your recipes a little bit. But I intend to, to, to make the recipes just the way they call for. Shouldn't have a problem that way. Um, now it's six minutes, a little about six minutes. Now it says hi to me. It's about six minutes to go, under six minutes. So this is going to come pretty fast. It doesn't take very long at all. And then once I get this done, I'll hit the cancel button. Then I'll, I'll put my uh, basil in. And then I will um, use the pulse button until it's blended. So you'll watch me do that as well. Um, and what I'm going to do on that is I'm going to take the lid off. I'm not going to try to touch the cap because the cap will be awful hot. So I'm going to leave that part go. Um, so, <laughs> need an arc. <laughs> yeah, 40 days, that sounds like the damn pack of time in Noah. Remember, they, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, my goodness. That's just a little too much rain. But I think that's how we are in the, in the, in the um fall it seems like we rain and we rain and we rain and we rain and just it doesn't want to stop it just keeps on raining um it is it is a pam pampered chef deluxe cooking blender um it cooks and it blends at the same time right now it is doing both it's 210 degrees which this is a glass canister so therefore i cannot touch it because i'll get scalded on it um and the cap is very hot too so I have to be very careful. It's got a little bit more. It's got under five minutes to go. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go. So this is getting there. But it goes to 212 temperature and then it starts counting down. Yes, it's got a heating element in it. So therefore, this cannot be put into the sink to wash it. you got to be sure you don't get the bottom of it wet because if you do, it won't work. So I cleaned it the other day when I used it and I showed everybody how I did it. I just put it. Put it in my, um, use my um, measuring cup and just pour some water in it and kind of swished it around and then uh, dumped it out and then put more water in it. Because it, it, cause after you wash it out, the soap gets is kind of sticks in there. So it took about two or three times to get that soap out of there. Then I just dried it and it was, it was good. It was good to go. But you got to keep it away from the sink. You can't sit it in the sink. It can't be washed by hand, you know. Um... I think, Erlene could tell you, I think it's six cups. Is that the maximum, Erlene? I believe it is. Erlene has used hers a lot. Um, 
I this is only the second time of me using it, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I believe it's six cups. You can't really put any more than that in there. There is a heat on here, and there's also and I can see the steam coming out the top. I cannot show you the heat, the cold, because it, the thing is too hot. Oh, seven cups cold. Oh, okay, see there it goes. Seven cups cold and six cups heat. So there you got your information. So six cups heat and seven seven cups cold. So there, which is an awesome, uh, an awesome blender. Um, this makes just enough for me. When I was using a quick cooker, that makes entirely too much. Makes way too many servings. This, I get about two bowls full out of it, but that's fine because I can eat one soup, one bowl one day and save the soup for the next day and finish it off. So I'm not, I'm not wasting it. Um, what, yeah, one, yeah, 140, yeah, 140 L is hot, yeah, right. Yep, yep, you're right. This right now goes up to 212. I cannot touch this canister because it's very, very hot. 212 is boiling. Um, right now, this is, is, he is two minutes and 38 seconds left to go, so it's almost done. Um, one, oh, 1.75 liter cold. Okay, that's the amount, it's liters. 1.40 hot and 1.75 cold, but I didn't know what it was in liters. But uh, this is an awesome machine. And if you'd like to have this, just contact Alexis and tell her you want to host a party or you want to be a consultant, and you can get it for $139.60 from, from the original price of $349. That's a good deal, a very good deal. That's how I got mine. Um, oh, you had to turn the blender around? Okay. <laughs> um, and that's a very good deal. Yes, it is. Well, I hosted a show earlier this month, and I was able to get this for 60% off. As I, I told Alexis that I wanted to host, when I knew this blender was coming out September 1st, and I said, well, let me host a show so I can get this for 60% off, because I knew it was the host special. So I hosted a party. I got mine for 60% off. Then I turned around, and I got my daughter one at 50% off, because she couldn't afford to buy it, so I got her one at 50% off. So I saved money there on course, too. No, what I did is, no, I had a face a Facebook page show. It's a virtual party. I had it through Facebook because I have a vegan Facebook page, and I, ho I ho hosted it through there. Um, and and, and, I, and it, it turned out real good. Um, I do it online through the Facebook. If you, if you don't know what my vegan Facebook page is, it's Karen's Vegan Heaven. I've got over close to 200, I think i got 250 members or something like that. Quite a few members. Um, and that's how I host my show. Alexis will come in there, and, and um, she's the admin too, and so she posts things in there and, and give me things to post, and and uh, it's it's awesome. It's it's also if you're interested in this blender too, there's a Pampered Chef Facebook page. Um, it's on the Deluxe Cooking Blender. Just do a search in the Facebook. Join that page so that you can get some ideas on it. I joined the page, and you can post recipes in there. You can ask questions. That's what I. That's what I told my daughter. Can't find an answer. Go there and get the answer. It's getting. If you can't, if you you know, I told my daughter. So if you're not trying to get that scorch out, ask them there. They can help you. Oh yeah, we're getting this part. See it going around. It's getting a little. It's, it's not as loud as the Vitamix. It's got 12 seconds to go. Um, Oops, I gotta be careful with this thing. I'll get myself caught. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of here right now. Okay, I'm gonna hit cancel on this. All right, and I'm gonna take this lid off because I'm not. I don't trust that cap. That cap is 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 uh, too hot, and you can see the lid's really hot too. But I'm just gonna sit it down like this, and I'm going to put the basil in here. You can watch me put the basil in here. And then I'm going to pulse it just a little bit, just to combine it. I don't have to run it very long, just to pulse it. Oh, I'm always getting it. There I go. All right, now I'm going to put this on pulse. Okay. Don't have to pulse it too long. Just to get it combined in there. Okay, that probably be good enough. That I don't have to do anymore. So I'm gonna cancel that. Okay, there. Now, because you can't use this without the. Ah, uh, it's not as combined as it should be, but you know it's okay. I don't. Uh, it's gonna be on the top, and I'll just let you see. I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit, and I'm going to get a bowl. 
use this. And I'm going to pour my soap soup in here. Um, you got to tip this up there in order to get this out. Now you can watch me put, put this in there. The ba it isn't completely combined, but that's okay. You want the basil to kind of stick out anyway a little bit. There. Now what do you think of that? Look at that. Look how much it made. Look at, the, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Wow, look at that. It really made a lot. I'm going to see how much more. I think I've got another. These hold quite a bit, and I'm going to see if I can fill this other one up with the... Uh, so I can wash this out. Yeah, the yummy is right. Okay. Probably will fit right. Whoa! Getting it all over me. Yep, that's pretty much. Put a little bit more in here. It's just about. Yeah, see? It fills these bowls right up. Um, you see that? How it fills them right up? It fills them right on up. Um, there. Though, well, those are they're stoneware bowls. They're not as big as the bowls that I've normally been using before. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse this thing off a little bit, and then I'll I'll try I'll wash it out while you're standing there or while I'm standing here, so you can see how it cleans itself. And I got to make sure I don't get any water under the element, so I'm real careful. Just rinse it. I'm rinsing it through, rinsing it just a little bit. This can be real tricky sometimes getting back on the... There we go. I sometimes put it on the machine wrong, but it's on there now. Okay. And I'm going to put... Use my, my measuring cup to measure out, the measure, out, measure out the water. And I make sure the water is warm because uh, it'll be a lot easier on it that way too. And I'll measure the... Get the warm water. I'll, measure, I'll take my lid and kind of wash it out a little bit too. Um, if you can see, this is a very good machine. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this... I'm going to clean this out while I'm... While I'm in here, so that you guys can see it clean itself, because nobody may be in here that's never washed it clean itself, and I want you to see it clean itself. Okay, not real hot, but it's hot enough. I think it'll work. Okay. All right. Just put three cups of water in there. That's all it needs. And just a little bit of soap. You don't put very much in. Just like that. Because it, it really builds it up with soap. It really does. Whoa. I'm always doing that, pouring this, getting it on the machine. It's not getting on the element though, but I, okay. There we go. Forgot I had water on it and I, all right. All right, now, now I'm gonna put this on heated wash and then I'm gonna hit the button. Now you can watch it heat it. Now you can watch it wash itself. There's a little bit of basil in there, but it'll it'll come out when I dump the water out. It's okay. Now this is gonna be a cup to to uh, 140 degrees. Um, see, it's been pretty hot, but it'll go up to 140 degrees to wash it out. People want to want, want me to show them how to wash it out before, so I thought I'd let you see it. Let me get a spoon so I can eat, so I can test that and see what it tastes like. It doesn't matter that the basil's on top because it's going to be good anyway. Mmm. Wow. That is really good soup. It is awesome. Mmm. This is very good soup. Um, you can hear it's bubbling. It's bubbling right now. It's up to 122. Um, so I like to show you exactly how this cleans it because this is a heated wash. Yes, this is with this being a heated wash, this is the best of all. Now, Vitamix, it, I've got a cleaning um, setting on mine too, but it's not a heated wash. But what I have, to, what I make sure is the water's plenty warm when I use when I use it and wash it. Comes out cleaner that way. Uh, yep, I did. I put. See how? Look at the soap. See the soap in there? Um, just a drop. You don't put very much in there because if you put too much in there, it's going to come off the cap. And they said in order to stop the bubbles, you have to use a, a teaspoon of uh, oil, vegetable oil. I, I don't know the, the science behind that, but that's what they say. But I just use a drop. 
You can see how much sense it's going to make. But it's going to make enough that it's going to clean it all the way up to the cap when it gets done. It's heating high, and Neil, good to see you. It was heating it up right now. Um, it's, when it gets up to where it needs to get, then, then it'll, um, it'll start um, cleaning it. It's getting into the cap and everything's cleaning it up real good. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I love this thing. It's only my second time of using it. It's my second time. I'm loving it. I really am. I'm really glad I got this machine. If you haven't got it, give it the wax to get this. Oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. No, your meal wants to get it for Daniel because I think Daniel would love to have this machine. Daniel does such a good job of what he does anyway. So he'd love to have this machine. It's got a little more than a minute to go. But this is an awesome soup. As you can see, it looks really good and it tastes good too. Awesome. It's delicious. Oh, awesome. <sighs> yeah, or at least got two tickets. <laughs> Sorry, Emil, I didn't order for Daniel's party, but I ordered that not so much for my own party, I couldn't order anymore. So, I, I would have given meal, but I just didn't. I just have to watch what I spend. I'm on a fixed income, so I gotta be real careful. So I spent enough of my own party and I can't really spend anymore. Yeah, I'm just if you didn't hear me, Yamil, I'm saying I'm if I I'm sorry to order from Daniel's party, but I just couldn't at that time. So I would if I had the money. But I'm <laughs> I'm you know Okay, now I'm gonna hit cancel. There, now it cleaned it. I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I don't have to unplug it. I'm just going to shut it off. I keep forgetting you don't have to, uh, <laughs> you don't have to uh, do that. You can shut it off. Now, she is right. It does stain it a little bit, but I think if I put this out in the sun, it does stain it just a little bit. You can see just a little bit, and I can put this out in the sun, and it should get, the, get it right off. But you can't, you don't really notice it that much. Um, I probably will put that out in the sun later, but it doesn't look that doesn't really look that bad. Um, you're gonna you're bound to bound to get some in there, you know. So I'll just probably leave the cap off now, so I can put it back in the sun later. Take this off now. No, no tilt it back that way to get it off. I'm gonna set this up here while my soup's sitting here, and I'm gonna go ahead and. and Get my my uh, measuring cup. Did I put it back? Yeah, I think I did. No, I didn't. And I'll put three cups of water in there and try to get that soap out of there. Use hot water. That way, I don't get it into the sink. Because if you get it in the sink, you're going to get it. You're going to get water all you know into your element, and you don't want to do that. So basically, what I do is I put it in there and kind of swish it around a little bit, and. And it kind of, it'll, it'll kind of more or less clean it out itself. As you can see, it's beginning to get the soap out of there. It won't take much more to get this soap out of here. <clears throat> and put a little more water. It's, it's a little, it's a little time consuming, but you, but it works. It's better than getting it in the sink and getting it wet. Because if you get it wet, then you're going to have a problem. <clears throat> and then you're going to get your head, heating element wet and then it won't work. See, it's finally getting the soap out of here, as you can see. See how you just get it off, you tilt it back that way. I'm just going to swish this around just a little bit. Not too much because I don't want it to come out all over the element. So there we go. See, it's pretty much clean. I'm going to have to take a rag to the very top of it, as you can see, which I will do. Take a rag on the top that didn't quite 
get that part there. But basically, it's pretty much done, and I can just dry it out, <coughs> and it's ready to go for the next time. That's all there is, too, is cleaning this up. And I'm going to take this off and show you how you, how you clean it out. Oh, it's got, huh, it's got a little uh, at the bottom, little tomato stuff at the bottom. Okay. Stain it at the bottom. I don't know how to get that out of there. Um, did yours stain at the bottom, too, Erlene? And how did you get it out? I just now noticed that it stained it at the bottom. How do you get this out at the bottom, Erlene? Did you, did you have that problem getting yours out? Because I don't know. <coughs> and I know you're in here. Because I'm going to have pro it's probably going to be be in here for a while, or will it come out? I don't know. It's it's it, the tomato loves to stain. Um, I have to throw this towel in the wash. I think anyway. I mean, I'm, it's coming out pretty much just by wiping on it a little bit. Um, uh, well, it started to have tomato stain on the bottom of my canister. Um, as you can see, it's getting all over my towel. I got to throw this in the wash anyway. I got some more towels to use. Um, but I, I it's coming out. I. <laughs> I was wondering. <coughs> oh, you use the brush. Okay. Well, it's coming out. I'm this towel. This towel is dirty anyway. Oh, took the toothbrush. Yeah, I've got that. I'm gonna have to set this back. Yeah, I've got that. If I can find it now. I put it in my drawer here. Ow! Oh, I put it in my drawer here, and I gotta find it. Um, let's see. Where did I put it at? Oh, here it is. I think. I don't know. I've got it. I've got it in the bottom, but I can't find it right now. I shoved it in down here. It was in the bag. <coughs> I'll have to do that later because I can't find it right now. I've got my drawers full of stuff. Where did I stick it in here? I mean, these drawers. These are my. These are my junk drawers, as you can tell. <laughs> I got junk in them. Um, let's see. Well, that's my. This is the plug. I thought I put the uh, thing in there. I've got the brush, but I've got to find it. I think I put it down in this drawer. I'll just have to look for it later. But uh, so this basically coming out. I'll just have to take the brush later with some water and clean it out. Oh, you have two brushes now. Um, I'm gonna have to take a. I'm gonna have to find that brush. Keep looking for it. Let me step away for a minute. Gotta blow my nose again, real quick. Okay, there we go. I got her clean now. I mean, I'm gonna have to use the, I'm gonna have to use the brush and that. I think that's what that brush is for. It gets it out at the bottom. Um, some of it come out, but not all of it. Most of it did anyway. There's a. Oh yeah, mine did too a little bit of that, um, Erlene. But you can put it out in the sun. So you can you can stick it out in the sun. But it's not really too bad. A little bit of orange on it. But I'm going to stick it out in the sun and see if I can clean it, if, if I can get it. Um, well, it's not too much sun right now. <laughs> I'll just have to, uh, just, yeah, it's okay. I'm, I can use it just the way it is. It don't look that bad, you know. I'm still trying to look for that brush. I don't know where I stuck it at. i got to be real careful. I I left it in, this, in the thing and I put it in here. I thought I did anyway. Um, I'm going to have to clean this drawer out to find it, I think. <laughs> um brush is hard to find. Maybe, I, maybe I'll find it anyway. I don't know. But anyway, I'll, I'll look for it later when I've got, when I'm off of here, when I've got more time. But, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to find it and use it. I know it's there. I just don't know where it, oh, it will come out. I, yeah, I can't find my brush right now. I do not know where I put it. It's in that drawer. I thought it was in that drawer, but I, uh, okay. What was in the soup? Let me tell you. Um, cause I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna have to take that canister and clean it out. Um, fine, I'll find the brush when I get off of here and I'll clean it out. Um, let me see. I'll tell you what was in the soup. I know it was a quarter cup, I used a quarter cup of vegetable broth. Um, and one teaspoon of salt. Um, two Roma tomatoes. And a can of, of whole peeled tomatoes. Um, one half medium onion, two garlic cloves. And a quarter cup of fresh basil leaves. That's and that's all it was. Just it's very simple. Not that much in here at all. As you can see, the soup came out nice. And these bowls are nice. They hold quite a bit. And this is the stoneware that I just got. 
Look how much they hold. This is enough for me. I got one for today and I got another one for tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, I won't be able to do a periscope tomorrow. I've got an appointment at 1 o'clock, so I'll have to forego tomorrow. I won't be on tomorrow, so you'll have to wait until Tuesday for me to come in. So I want to let you know now so that you that you won't be looking for me. Um, it just happens that I'll be at an appointment at 1 o'clock and it's probably going to run over So because um, it's downtown. So I have to take care of that appointment. It has to be done, so I won't be coming in here. So... I'll find something between now and Tuesday to do when I come back in again. But you can see this tomato soup is awesome. I'm going to try some more of it. Um, mm, it is really good. I love tomato soup anyway. That's my favorite soup of all. I know it needs crackers in it, but look how good it looks. And I'm going to post this up on the on the uh, Facebook uh, um, Pampered Chef Deluxe Blender page. But not my page because Erlene has already posted it up there. There's no sense of me posting it up there when she already put it there. Um, but this, this is an awesome recipe and you should give it a try. Buy this blender, get the, and the book comes with it. There's quite a bit in here. I mean, um, if you like soups and I love soups at this time of year, especially when it's cold and, uh, you got your beet soup, which I want to try that, but beets aren't in season unless you use canned beets or frozen. No, you won't. You won't see the tomatoes. Because they're they're pulverized, you know, they're pulverized. See, they're they're all the only thing you see is the basil, but that's fine because you kind of want to see that anyway. Um, but um, got beet soup, which I want to try that one maybe sometime. There's cauliflower soup, not quite sure about that one. I do love cauliflower. Another thing I won't try is the mushroom bisque soup because I don't like mushrooms. I do want to try the cheesy potato soup. Um, I've already tried the sweet potato and the and this tomato basil soup. So I've got one, two, three soups that I can try. So, because there's a total of six soups on here. So I've got three more I can try. Herlene's probably tried them, just about tried them all. But there's smoothies in here. You can do your nut butters in here, your peanut butter, cashew butter, almond butter, sunflower seed butter, um, and a super seed butter, whatever that is. Oh, that's, um, looks like you severed several different nuts together. So um, there's a lot of things, like I said, in your alternative milks you can do in here, smoothies. Um, you can do ice cream as well. I want to do a strawberry banana smoothie, which I have to get the strawberries yet. Um, it does call for Greek yogurt. However, I can substitute coconut cream for the Greek yogurt because I already looked it up and, and they will allow you to substitute coconut cream. So that's what I will do. Um, it's got orange juice in it too, which I haven't got that. I have to buy that. Uh, of course, I can take an orange and I can like some oranges and I can uh, juice them too. It's only a quarter of a cup. So it's best on that. If you need orange juice, just take some oranges and juice them. Get your fresh juice. And it calls for uh, strawberries and a bit one banana quarter, you know, and then you've got, it calls for ice. You know, I can always buy ice or make some or whatever. So that's what it calls for, basically. And then you got a, a tropical mango smoothie, a blueberry peach smoothie, a super green smoothie. I'm not sure about that one. And a cucumber melon smoothie. I'm not sure about that one either. Can you imagine cucumbers in a, in a smoothie? Hmm. I got cucumbers, though. I need, I need orange juice. Huh. You need a melon, too. It doesn't tell you what kind of melon. Oh, well. Anyway, there's quite a few recipes in here. And this is, um, there's the strawberry banana smoothie. And here's what, here's what the sweet potato uh, soup looked like. Um, oh, you like pickled? Oh, I, you know, I don't, I think I had pickled beets years ago. Um, I haven't had them in a long time. But beets are, you know, are, are seasonal anyway and if you want to make the beet soup now you can't really make it now with fresh beets because they don't have any you have to get them at the time in the garden when they're out in the garden you know so i don't know can how canned would really work i really don't know do you know if canned would work with that very well i don't know um <laughs> well I, I made a tomato soup i made a tomato basil soup in the in the chef, uh, pampered chef quick cook uh, deluxe cooking blender um it's an awesome blender um it's from Pampered Chef. Um, well, this isn't Sabbath. This is Sabbath was yesterday. Uh, oh, you got to get to the farmer's market. <laughs> um, you said happy Sabbath. Well, Sabbath was yesterday. It was over at sundown yesterday. Um, this is Sunday, so I don't say happy Sabbath on Sunday. But anyway, um, all you need is grilled cheese, and I'll be in heaven. Oh, you know, this would be good with grilled cheese. Absolutely, it sure would. Um, I have a panini, but I also have my skillets that I can make grilled cheese in. I have a vegan cheese. I don't think I have vegan cheese slices right now, though. But I'll take vegan cheese slices and I'll put them in a put them in my pan and and um. Oh, happy post sap. Oh, I I'm sorry. I missed. I missed it. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I had a good Sabbath yesterday. Um, quiet, as, as always. It's real quiet. But uh, I'm learning a lot by using this blender. Um, I wish I knew more about it, but this is on my second time using it, so I'm going to have to get used to it. I'm going to have to take my brush and find my brush with a little water and clean that out at the bottom because there's tomato stuck on the bottom. Um, I didn't know it was going to do that, but I want to clean it out. Um, oh, welcome from Brazil. Good to see you, Carlene, and thank you for coming in. But this is a tomato basil soup. It's an awesome soup. It only had five ingredients, and those that just come in here, let me tell you what the ingredients are. One quarter cup of low-sodium vegetable broth or water. Um, oh, you use baking soda? But I have to get my brush and use baking soda. One teaspoon of salt, two Roma tomatoes, one can of whole peeled tomatoes, one half medium onion, two garlic cloves, and um, a quarter cup of fresh basil, which I got some fresh basil and just pulled that in there and combined it. And uh, you can still see it, but that's awesome because you want to see the basil anyway, but it's chomped up. So this is a simple soup to make, and I'm going to have to get off of here and eat it before it gets too cold because I don't like cold soup. Because uh, I want to clean this out a little bit better anyway. So, and like I said, I won't be coming on tomorrow because I've got um, a, an appointment at 1 o'clock, which come, <laughs> ties into the time I'd be on at 1.30. So I won't come on tomorrow. Um, I'll come on Tuesday, though, however. Um, if I could get something for to make a smoothie for Tuesday morning, maybe I'll do that, too. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But until until I, we meet again, I hope you have got, you guys have a beautiful and marvelous day. And rest of today today and have a good day tomorrow. Take care. God bless. I love you all and bye-bye.